Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I am your host Nick Renard and today we're going to be talking about Google Display Network responsive ads. This is a new type of ad that Google is rolling out with. They said that they're expected to have most of this uh, live by October I believe is what they said although everything uh, with Google betas and alphas is always subject to change sometimes it comes up six months earlier sometimes it comes out two years later sometimes it doesn't come out at all or they <laughs> end, up, end up going a, a different route entirely so I'll, uh, I'll give you kind of the lowdown on uh, the overview of this uh, you'll recall that in my last video blog I went over expanded text ads uh, responsive ads are similar to the expanded text ads that I went over last time. Uh, the biggest difference is that these are going to be on the display network rather than the search network. So with the expanded text ads, the advantages we had on those were we had significantly more room to write ad copy, which uh, allowed us um, to get our ads clicked on more, higher click-through rates, uh, pushes our competitors further down the page because we have more ad copy, and uh, gives us more opportunities to write creative ad writing. So I gave some examples of asking and answering questions in my last blog, vlog, blog, blog. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that these are being revamped is mostly for mobile. Everything is kind of transitioning towards mobile these days and they found that the larger headlines that they've been doing in the expanded text ads and the responsive ads are effective on mobile. And so yeah, you can see here internal studies showing up to 12% increase in CTR for the ETAs. We see, I'll go over some of the statistics for the responsive ads shortly. So the point is, is that these are similar, but they're tailored for the display network. So let's go over some of this stuff here. Uh, we have greater creative input for advertisers. Uh, we can upload images, headlines, and descriptions that meet your brand guidelines. These, the, these are all from, from Google. This recently just came out to us, so we just learned about it ourselves. Uh, we have, uh, they found that there have been more conversions coming from the ads within the, uh, they do internal tests on the, uh, the old ads versus the new responsive ads with the expanded text ads. They always beta test this stuff before they roll it out for us. So the test that they did on a similar product showed 20% increase in conversions at a 33% lower CPA or cost per acquisition compared to the old ads. Um, sometimes those numbers are a little bit inflated, but usually if he, they, they always go based off of statistical significance. So the long story short in this is that the new responsive ads are going to be strictly better than the old ads, assuming you, you're, you're using um, conversions and cost per conversion as your KPI, which you should be. <laughs> Written vlog, vlogs and blogs about that as well. Uh, the point, uh, these ads will drive awareness beyond just the click that native ads that uh, they tried uploading or that they did testing on were viewed 53% more often than the banner ads, which is pretty significant. Uh, the difference between native and display ads, and this, this is a lot of the reason that they're switching over to uh, the new style of, and I'll show you some examples of what they actually look like here on the next slide. Um, native ads generally have more information, more text on them. Uh, the display ads are going to be more brand awareness, so it's just going to be kind of more graphic-y, have a logo, uh, very, they encourage you on display ads to not really use that many words, maybe like 10 to 15 words on them. The, these ads on the, on the, um, the responsive ads for the, the Google Display Network, what they're realizing is that the native ads, you can see that the, uh, on the previous note, viewed 53% more often than banner ads. They're starting to realize that the, uh, the text on the ads isn't all that bad after all and um, yeah it's just it's showing better stats which is why they're they're transitioning over to it so it says here Google is leaning more towards native but not all the way which is why they're encouraging us to use uh, more copy in the ads uh, I have a final note here there's definitely a balance between that just because they say use more ad copy doesn't mean you want to have a wall of text in your ad. What it means is that we want to have more information so that the client, uh, well, client, potential client or potential customer feels like they have more information about your product before clicking on your ad and going to your website. So I found that to be more effective. So here we go with the examples of what they look like. Uh, my favorite two examples are the ones here where it says standard text here. You can see book stylish hotels in New York City. Plan your getaway today and get the best rates. So a very 
typical text ad. And then you can see with the GDN response, responsive ads, the biggest difference between these two is that we get more room to be writing. So we get more headlines, we get more description lines, we get more characters. Not a huge difference in those. Where I'm actually in, in the following slide, I'm going to show you the exact differences between these, but this I wanted to give you a visual first. You can see here in the rich media text one has an image. Uh, with some text over the image. One of the biggest differences with the GDN ads is that the text is actually be completely separate from the image. That's actually one of my favorite changes because one of the biggest problems that we had with trying to get clients to upload display ads was we needed a graphic designer to kind of resize the images and overlay the text and sometimes that could get a little convoluted or complicated uh, or you know the, the graphic designer that we were working with on their team um, I don't want to say that they're incompetent, but sometimes those jobs are just easier said than done. And, uh, you know, it, it can take longer than you would like it to take. So what they're doing is they're, they're segmenting the image from the text entirely. So now all we have to do is have a high re resolution image, upload that, and then the, you can see here how the text kind of shows up below the images. Yeah, I think it just kind of simplifies things and allows us to make... Uh, more lucrative images uh, at a faster rate, which is great, especially if you have a large campaign where you're, you know, trying to rotate things in and out, and um, you know, do A/B split testing, figure out what's working, what's not working, uh, etc. So let's go over the exact differences on these. Here's the uh, the specs between the two. So here's the original uh, GDN text ads, and then on the on the left, and then on the right, you have the GDN responsive ads. So you can see. The old version, the headlines, we only got one headline, and it was 25 characters long. The new headlines, headline, headlines, there's two, there's two, so it's plural now. There's two of them. Uh, to, one of them is 25 characters, so the first one's going to be 25 characters, and the next one's going to be 90 characters. And that's very similar to what you see in the uh, expanded text ads on the search network. Uh, our first two headlines, I believe, are 30 characters on the ETAs, and the next one is 70. So you can see how they're giving you a couple shorter lines and then one really long line to, uh, you know, put kind of a, a longer description in there. In the old one, uh, the old specs, we got two description lines, 35 characters each, so a total of 70. In the new one, they're just merging that into one description line, uh, but now they're giving you an extra 20 characters, so now we get up to 90 characters on that, so that's good. Uh, on the image, again, we talked a little bit about the image already and how we had to kind of, well, I guess this is for text ads, but the advantage is that uh, with the new responsive ads, we don't have that uh, text overlay on the images, makes that easier. Uh, they recommend here of uploading an image of 1200 by 628. Um, those specs are going to be important. The reason that they have such a big image there as a recommendation is you want to upload a high resolution image because oftentimes they're going to be cropping, resizing. So if it's a crappy image and we're trying to blow it up, it may turn blurry or pixelated and we don't want that. Uh, here on, under advertiser name and final URL, one of the advantages of what they're doing with the new ads is they're revamping the uh, the display URL and so we actually get a little more room to be working with on the display URL it's not really a huge change but it, it, it does give us strictly more text to be working with in our ads which makes our ads that much bigger uh, which is also extremely important in these uh, these next few months as they're transitioning over to the new ads because if you jump on this quickly then your ads are going to be much bigger uh, have better quality scores than your competitors and so you're going to have an, an, an advantage out the gates uh, when they do decide to launch this product live. Alright, let's move on here. I'm going to go over some of the best practices that they have from Google. Uh, some, of the, some of these will be very good. Some of them are things that are kind of obvious so I'll point those out for you. Uh, the first one is regarding the images. Uh, they recommend using simple images that make sense at a glance on a range of screen sizes uh, for mobile and desktop, which is really important because you got to consider some people are going to be looking at this on you know a massive monitor at their desk. Other people are going to be looking at it at a tiny screen on their on their cell phone. So, uh, but yeah, they they say use an image, uh, use it to support the main point in your headline, description, and landing page. Uh, 
I have another note here that your headline description and landing page need to line up. So the ad copy between those and the words between those need to, and even the images between those need to line up in order to get you high quality scores. If you have different keywords in your uh, in your ad than you do on your landing page, we found that that generally lowers lower uh, quality scores overall. So it's it's a good idea to make sure that those line up. That's something that I threw in there. Um, that wasn't from Google. Again, for the image sizes, they're recommending 1200 by 68, uh, 628. That's just the biggest image size. Um, again, it's just for resolution purposes. Uh, the last thing here is to avoid text or calls to action in your image. It's actually the opposite of what they used to recommend because we always wanted a call to action, but now they're including the call to action separately from the image. So what they want now is just 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 an image, no text, nothing. Um, the text and all that is going to be filled out in other fields. So the image is just the image. All right, best practices on the logo. Now we get to insert a logo. I believe the logo is actually optional. If you do upload a logo, it has to be perfectly square. Um, it says here, consider providing a logo even though, oh, it is optional, yeah. Uh, this will increase uh, the branded assets shown in your ad. So yeah, the, the logo is nice. It, I don't know. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't want your company's logo on your ad. So yeah, it is optional, so you don't have to have it, but they highly recommend it. Best practices regarding the headlines. Uh, draw interest by writing longer editorial style 70 to 90 character headlines. Now, since we have 90 characters now, instead of two broken up 35 character headlines, we get a lot more room to get creative. So they say here, entertain, question, and inspire versus overselling a product or service. This is probably one of my favorite um, best practice suggestions that they have. When we only had 35 lines of text, we were often <clears throat> limited to how creative we could get, especially if you had really long uh, keywords that you were trying to include. I always use the word communications as a uh, as an example keyword because a lot of our clients uh, bid on the on the keyword communications in some form or another. But it's just so many characters in that one word, and it's so much uh, ad space. It's a big word. Uh, so if you're trying to fit that you know, in a call to action line that's only 25 or 35 characters long, it'd be, it could be kind of difficult to get creative with those. But now with 90 characters, we get more room to be doing things like asking questions and answering them, um, or even just kind of setting them up. Or uh, you can even write about, you know, two different aspects of, of uh, or I guess, um, advantages of your product or service within your ad and still fit that in just because we have so much space now. I have a couple examples here. Uh, I, I mentioned the uh, the example of asking a question and answering it. So the first one here would be an ad example that says, need new appointment scheduling software? Schedule demo with our experts. And then the, the next one that would be less good. So you can see how I ask a question there and then answer it. So it's like, yeah, pretty straightforward. One that would, and then the following one here that I would consider to be less good says, buy now, free quote, call today, we're the best. Um, that's kind of how a lot of our, that's an oversimplification of how our ads used to, we obviously we would never upload an ad that looked exactly like that, but you can see how there's really no like setup in that. It's just kind of like spamming you with call to actions. Um, doesn't really give any informa information about the product or what they are. Whereas in the first one, you can see that, you know, it's appointment scheduling software. Uh, you can see the call to action is, uh, scheduling a demo which is also answering the question that you originally asked in the first line so getting a little more I don't know if poetic is the right word but creative is probably a better word uh, with your ad copy is definitely uh, a, suge a suggestion that uh, they advocate and that we definitely advocate as well moving on uh, the description Make sure that the description is different from the headline that you have. You're going to have a lot of room to write in your headline. And uh, same thing with your description line. So breaking that up so that you're not talking about the same thing the whole time. Uh, maybe, you know, including like just the keywords that uh, you're interested in hitting on the first line along with the call to action. And then your description line, the 90 character one is, you know, kind of a longer sentence explaining exactly what you are. Um, Know, maybe some of the advantages of using your product or uh, maybe a particular promotion, something like that, but breaking it up a little bit. Again, we have so much room to work with, so why not, you know, do more? So it says this will allow you to get the most opportunity uh, to get your message out. We have a lot more room to work with in new ads, so we want uh, we can be more creative with ad copy strategies. 
moving on. Uh, best practices for the number of creatives. To optimize the performance of responsive ads, create a responsive ad using creatives from the top performing text in your ad group. This is pretty straightforward. Um, essentially what they're saying is to take the ads that were performing well previously and try, don't try to like revamp it entirely, but just try to build on top of that. So you can use the same copy that you were using in the previous ads that you've already done A-B split testing on, but just try to like you know add an extra description line because we have that extra room to work with and you know keep going from there the next one it says it's it says that Google will automatically optimize for the best performing ads this is one where I actually I would not condone that at all I uh, we never recommend giving Google any kind of control over uh, bids or uh, bid adjustments or ad rotations or anything like that we advocate educating yourself about it and doing it manually um, anytime that you give Google control over that kind of stuff, you got to realize that Google is a business and their biggest concern is making money, which means getting clicks. But getting a bunch of clicks is not necessarily good for you if those clicks aren't converting, which is why you should be doing this stuff manually and be doing the, um, the bid optimization based on you know what what your KPIs are as a company you know if you're if it's just strictly for brand awareness then you might want to look at impressions or if it's um, you know you're trying to generate revenue for your company uh, then you should be using conversions or cost for conversion as your KPI I actually have some blogs that are written about that as well um, I have one called understanding your KPIs you can check out if you want uh, moving on best practices for update frequency uh, <clears throat> this will be very specific to each advertiser Keep in mind that every new ad requires time to be learned by AdWords to understand CTR and conversion performance. I have in parentheses here statistical significance. Expect the system will take three to seven days to learn the new ad creative. So what that all means, all they're saying is that make sure that you have statistical significance before rotating your ads. I suppose that isn't um, relevant if you're using the automatic optimizations from Google, but again, we don't we don't advocate that, so um, assuming that you're not doing that, just make sure that before you decide that one ad is underperforming or you know outperforming another ad, um, that you have statistical significance for that data before uh, pulling the trigger on that. So anyways, that's kind of an overview of what's coming out. Again, we just learned about it very recently ourselves, so we'll, we will be releasing more content on these, and uh, as we start getting these uploaded for our clients and start testing them, we'll start writing more blogs and vlogs explaining, um, you know, maybe some more kind of in-depth uh, views of how they look in the editor, um, some of the advantages, some of the success stories that we've had, uh, maybe some examples to try for you, so look out for that, and I will see you guys in my next video blog. Thanks for watching.